Hello folks, welcome back once again uh, in yet another video in this series where I'm going to help you revise Java programming using BlueJ environment. So this is actually a continuation of the previous two videos where I was using nested loops to pretty much explain how to actually print patterns, how to actually print patterns using nested loops. So we saw how do we actually print the, the star pattern, the triangle pattern and all that. So in this video, I'm, at, I'm going to dedicate this video for just printing one type of pattern, which is going to be the pyramid pattern. So I just open this up over here. So this pattern, how are we actually going to print this pyramid? Forget about the underlines over here. This is star. Just using stars, you have to print this pyramid pattern. So how do we do this? So let's get started straight away. So <clears throat> When the pyramid actually is given to you, it appears it appears like this. There is one pyramid in the first row, three pyramids in the second row, one, two, three, four, five pyramids in the third row, and we have seven pyramids in the fourth row, and then we have nine pyramids in the fifth row or the last row. So how do we print this using nested for loops? So I've actually written down this box for you to understand things, but you don't have to print the boxes, you just have to print the stars. So hope this is clear for you. This box is just to give you an idea of how many rows and how many columns are there. Now let's actually observe very carefully what is happening in row 1. How many empty boxes do you see? 1, 2, 3, 4. There are 4 empty boxes or simply blank spaces in row number 1. In row number 2, this is row number 2 where the cursor actually is blinking right now. You have 1, 2 and 3 blank spaces. And then in row number 3, you just have two blank spaces. In row number 1, we just have one blank space. And in the last row, we don't have any blank space. We don't have any blank space. So, what do you observe? What do you observe here? Logic. Let's actually try to analyze what could be the pattern which is going to repeat in the program. If you see the first row, First, we can print four blank spaces followed by one star. Does it make sense? All right. In the second row, I'm actually going to print three blank spaces followed by three stars. In the third row, I'm going to print two blank spaces followed by five stars. Now, observe the number of blank spaces count is continuously decreasing from four, three, two, one, and when it comes to the final row, it's going to be zero. So it's starting from 1, 2, 3, 4, the number of blank spaces to be printed. The 4 becomes 3 in the second row, 3 becomes 2 in the third row, and three and 2 becomes 1 in the fourth row, and the fifth row, that 1 becomes 0. So number of blank spaces, the counter, which is keeping track of the blank spaces, how many blank spaces to print in each row, that is decrementing from, starting from 4 until 0. 4, 3, 2, 1, 0. 2, 1, and 0. I haven't actually typed down the logic for second and the first row because I assume it must be like self-explanatory. Now at the same time when you are printing four blank spaces, how many stars are you actually printing in the first row? One star. At the same time, in the second row you are printing three stars. In the third row you are actually printing five stars. So if you have two different counters, one counter to keep track of the number of blank spaces we have to print in each row, followed by which we have to print the stars. So the row counter or the, or the space counter is decrementing by 1, whereas the star counter is incrementing by 2. See here, if we have two variables, if we have two variables, which is keeping track of how many spaces we are printing in each row, followed by how many stars we are printing, the space counter is actually decrementing starting from 4, 3, 2, and the star counter is incrementing from 1, 3, and 5. 1 signifies we are printing 1 star in the first row, 3 signifies we are going to print 3 stars in the second row, See, 1, 2, and 3. And 5 signifies we are actually printing 5 stars in the 5th row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. This is the breakup of the logic. So these rows and columns certainly seem to have helped us to see the problem in a more organized way. So once you see the problem in a more structured and organized way, so breaking apart the logic is very easy. Now we have, now we have pretty much got close to the logic. We just have to get started with writing the code. Let me, okay, let me minimize this. Let me minimize this and keep this here. Let's just me keep this here and let me open the editor. So I've actually created a class by the name pyramid. So 
So let me create the class. Class pyramid followed by you know just a simple main function. Public static void main. Then the first thing what you're supposed to do in any of these programs is identify how many rows are there. One, two, three, four, five. So there are five rows. So I need to initialize a row counter. I need one for loop which executes five times. For int i equals to one, then we have i less than or equal to five, then we have i plus plus. Then I need to actually print five new lines. So I can I can just add system dot out dot println. So my work of actually printing five different new lines is done. Now with each of the line, I need to actually print a star. As I told you in the previous uh, explanation, just a few minutes in the slide, we need two counters, space counter and star counter. All right. So I need two local variables over here, say space counter and star counter. I need to initialize the star counter to what? I need to initialize a star counter to 1. That's the first value because we need to print 1 star in the first row. How many spaces? 4 spaces in the first row. So I need to initialize the space counter to 4 and star counter to 1. And now we have to think about another loop which will go and sit here. Which will go and sit here in this area. Which will actually print the number of spaces and stars based on this count variable. So how many times we need that loop to execute? First we need to print four spaces. First print spaces. First print the spaces. So for int j equals to 1, j less than or equal to what? What is that variable which, which is going to come over here, which is going to decide how many, how many spaces am I going to print? It's going to be space counter. And we are going to print J++. So here in this for loop, I'm going to give system.out.println print a blank space. That's it. Nothing much. And close this for loop. Done. This loop will take care of just printing the number of spaces which is governed by this loop. So what is going to be this loop? Let me open this uh, notepad over here. Okay. Initially, space counter is equal to 4. So when you come inside this loop, this is going to print 4 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4. Fine. It has printed 4 spaces. Then we need a loop to print the number of stars. For int k is equal to 1. k less than or equal to. What is that variable which is going to come here which decides how many stars I need to print? It has to be star counter. So I put here, I put a variable here, star counter, and then I say k plus plus. As simple as that. Now I just have to print a star. Instead of space, I need to print a star. So what happens here? When the space counter is 4, when the main loop is just running for 5 times, it just needs to print 5 different rows. Empty rows. First empty row is printed over here. Empty row is printed. I mean printed. And then. Oops. Where is the program? Yeah. Then we actually come inside this loop. I would call it as say this as loop 1. This is loop 1. Say this is loop 2. And say this is loop 3. So the loop 2 is taking care of the task of printing the spaces. First, first time the space counter is 4, so the loop 2 will print 1, 2, 3, 4. 4 spaces over here. Observe the notepad. Notepad over here. Observe this notepad now. When space counter is equal to 4, the loop 2 is going to print 4 spaces. 1, 2, 3, 4. And then after it prints 4 spaces, why is it printing only 4 spaces? Because this is j is equal to 1 to 4. The loop 2 is going to run exactly 4 times, printing 4 spaces. And then 
After printing four spaces, we are going to come to loop number three. In loop number three, it's going to execute exactly from one to number of times the star counter. So initial value of star counter over here is is one. Star counter is equal to one initially. So after printing four spaces, we'll print one star. And then we'll exit out of this block. We'll again go back to the main loop. Main loop has to run five times. It has just run one time. So it will come to the main loop, new line. In the new line, it's now going to execute loop two. Now the value of space counter is going to be three. Now we have to make the star counter as three. So what we have to do here, space counter minus minus and star counter is equal to star counter plus 2 that's it so when we do this 1 2 3 4 spaces followed by 1 2 and 3 stars so it would look something like this and then the next line again and so on it's going to keep continuing like this 1 2 it's going to give it's going to print 5 stars followed by it's going to print 1 1 2 3 4 5 so it will keep continuing to print in the same manner. So let's let's actually run the program. It's a very simple program. It's a very simple program. Once we break the logic, we are making the space counter decrement by 2 and star counter increment by plus 2. The reason being, see here, space counter is decrementing 4, 3, 2. So space counter minus minus and star counter has to increment by 2. First row 1 star, second row 3 stars, third row 5 stars. And everything is controlled by loop 1. Loop 1 is running for the five, 5 different times because loop 1's task is to make sure the cursor comes here, prints a new line, the cursor say for suppose over here, prints a new line, comes here, prints this pattern, again comes here, prints a new line and then continues printing the spaces and the stars. So the main loop is running 5 times because we have 5 different rows and 5 different rows, each row in a different line. Basically, five different rows, it means going to be in different plan altogether. Both are the same. So, I hope you have understood the program. Let's compile it. System.out. It's a typo. P R I N T L N. So, let's compile the program. No syntax errors. Close it. Let me, you know, like I need to minimize this. Now, let me actually call the main function. Oops. Clear it, close it. What's wrong with it? Aha, uh -huh, it's not ln, it has to be print. It has to be printed in the same line. The space and the stars has to be printed in the same line. Now call the main function. See? See the pyramid over here. That's it. As simple as that. So we've got the output. So clear it, close it. And this is probably a very short video, just a 10 minutes video. We have discussed about how to actually print the pyramid pattern. So that's it for today. And let me actually try to stop the recording and and we have to wait until I get back with another video. So that's it for now. See you again in yet another video. Goodbye.